The following is a Dorf TV production brought to you in cooperation with Jack Dorfinson. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for the Stock Show, brought to you live from Mr. Holzer's Ranch, way up north near the Canadian border. Let's have a rousing round of applause for that unique YouTube personality. Here he comes, direct from the bar, Mr. Holster! That's me, Jack. Howdy, Par. Yeah, it's me, Mr. Holster, and and Jack. <laughs> Jack, you turned around. What'd you get out today, Jack? You got out the Jim Beam pre-prohibition ripe. Well, that, that bottle's getting to the end there, Jack. That well, should be good for a couple more shows at least. Jim Beam, right? Well, let's get the old ranch shot glass out. <clears throat> yeah, that looks like there's a little gene. Well, at any rate, <sighs> West Texas dust. <coughs> yeah, we, we really got to clean these out, Jack. No cork tonight, but you can smell the cap. Oh, this stuff is so good, though. This is such good rye whiskey. Pre-prohibition 90 proof. Just put a little bit in the old shot glass. All things in moderation. Same Mr. Holster is being moderate tonight. <laughs> yeah. I'm saving up because the wife's out of town and the maid's working tonight. Okay. To the sunny slopes of long ago. That doesn't heat you up and cool you down all the same time. I tell you, it's been quite a week here. I twisted my ankle the other day when I slipped on the ice. How my foot got in that glass, I'll never know. Went down to the doctor's office, and the doctor said, we better take some x-rays, and, and you should have seen the x-ray. My liver was throwing an onion at the camera. And... On top of that, the maid is mad at me because she saw me kissing my wife the other day. It's been just one of those weeks. You know what it means to come home and there is someone there to greet you with a smile, a hug, and a kiss? Yeah, it means you walked into the wrong house. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Jack. That was good tonight, Jack. I like that. Yeah. This is what we're going to talk about tonight, guys. First, it's kind of cold in here, Jack. We're going to have to get the, the wood-burning stove going here. The weather has turned. It's nippy outside. That's why we're not in the dry bean, because the, the wind's really blowing out there, and it's only like 50 degrees, so Jack and I chickened out. <laughs> <laughs> decided to come inside. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. We're talking about the 10 millimeter versus the 45 ACP. And I got out two guns here that I thought would be good guns to talk about for this. And one is my SIG P220 in 10 millimeter. And the other is my SIG P220 in 45 ACP. You see, that's why I got them out. Two SIGs, the same gun in two different calibers, but not the same gun. They're a little different. And we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about the cal calibers, kind of compare them to each other, too. First off, let's take a look at, well, let's start here. Let, this is my old West German SIG P220, and of course, th this is the gun that started it all for SIG. That was their first outing into handguns. I really start started what became a big gun for him. The Sig P226 came out of this. This one's in 45 ACP. It has a seven-round magazine. Now the current production they use eight-round magazines in the current production. Basically the same gun except for this has a stamped and welded slide on it. Where now they're all milled on one piece. 
This one, of course, being made in West Germany. It's a double action, single action. First trigger pull is double action. When the slide comes back, after pulling the trigger on that, though, the hammer stays back in a single action mode, and every shot after that is single action. Till you decock the hammer after shooting, which it has this nice decocker right here, and you decock the hammer. So, like that. Very nice gun. I, I, I like this gun a lot. It's very accurate. The downside to it is it takes a lot more work to get accustomed to switching from double action into the single action and making that transition without, especially in a heated heat of the moment, when you're when your your heart's pumping and you're going to not pull that trigger the second time I, I'm a real fan of of having the trigger pull be the same on each shot so but I have carried this type of gun in the past the p226 and the Walther p88 which is one of the first automatics I was given to use. Now we're going to take a look at the SIG P220. Now this one's a little different in that this one is a single action only. So you carry it cocked and locked and each shot single action just like in 1911. They also make this in a double action single action like this. So they kind of got two variants going on with this, this, but they do make it with a shorter barrel in the double action, which would be pretty identical to this one here, except for 10 millimeter instead of 45 ACP. And this gun here is yet to be fired. It's one I bought, I hate to say it, six months ago, I think, and I refused to fire it until I got the shooting range done. Now I've got it done and, and I'm trying to find 10 millimeter frangible ammunition. I can't shoot it because I don't have any ammo for it yet. But at any rate, I bought this gun because, and of course this, this gun has the 8 round magazine like the current production 220s would. I bought this gun because I, for, for a number of years, I would say about, I don't know, 5 or 6 years, I worked for someone and the gun that worked best for the job was a Smith & Wesson's end frame in 41 Magnum. And I bought this gun because the ballistics on this are, are really quite similar to a 41 Magnum. You know, the 41 Magnum was brought out as a police gun, basically. And it never caught on. Again, just like the 10 millimeter, same thing. They brought out the 10 millimeter. The FBI adopted it and, and shortly after that decided that they couldn't, it didn't work for them. Yeah, same thing happened with the the 41 Magnum in the revolver, but it's just a, a fantastic rounds for a lot of reasons. And this is quite similar. And one of the the little research I did is on the silver tip hollow points from Winchester on this because that's what I used to carry in the 41 Magnum. And in the 10 millimeter, there are 175 grains, and I, I and I'm thinking. That's the same as what I used to carry. I think it was a 175 grain bullet in that. It, uh, the muzzle velocity on that, I think, is also very similar. In the silver tip, 10 millimeter, 175 grain bullet, the muzzle velocity is 1,290 feet per second from the muzzle in a five and a half inch barrel. And that gives you 649 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle when it comes out. And I think ballistically that's going to be pretty identical to what the, the uh, silver tip is in the 41 Magnum. But I didn't do that research to actually... But as I remember, I think that's pretty close to the same. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to shooting this and using this firearm. And I'm having a hard time finding a holster for it, let me tell you. Yeah. But, move on to the 45, and here in the 45, 
in the same it's actually called a Super X round on the 10 millimeter, but it is a silver tip bullet. They actually have it designated as a silver tip bullet. The same thing here in a 45, the Super X, it's a 185 grain bullet that Winchester makes. And I'm comparing these because I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't use a 185 grain bullet in this gun, but we'll talk about that in a bit. But I'm comparing them because it's the same Super X round or a comparable Super X round in a different caliber made by Winchester. So we can look at this. Okay, the, the silver tip hollow point Super X bullet in the 45 ACP and 185 grain has a muzzle velocity of 1,000 feet per second when it leaves that barrel. And that's out of a 5-inch barrel. And... It has 411 foot pounds of energy. So we compare that to the 10 millimeter, and the 10 millimeter is 175 grains, so it's a little lighter. 10 grains lighter. Muzzle velocity, however, has jumped up 290 feet instead of 1,000 feet per second, as it would be from the 185 grain 45, it's 1,290 feet per second. And your your pounds of energy go from the 411 here up to 649. So looking at that bullet, it's not hard to figure out which gun you want. Yeah, you want that 10 millimeter. There's no question about it. You're taking very little loss in the size of the of the bullet. Because I've always said, and Jack's always said that too, haven't you, Jack? Jack, seriously, can you at least, if you're going to sleep through the show... Can you at least sleep with your head? Let me put this down. Seriously, seriously if you're going to sleep with, through the show, can you at least sleep with your head facing the camera? I mean, I know you're the producer and really don't have to do anything, but seriously? Can you at least look like you're watching what I'm doing and will yell at me if I do it wrong? It's like you don't care at all, man. It hurts. You cut me to the quick, and, I, and I've got the sores quick in town. Anyway, where was I? <laughs> So, yeah, see, I get lost so easy. So you got a 10-grain heavier bullet here. And, oh, yeah, like I've always said, Jack's always said it, too. Jack started it. This is where I've got it. I got it from you, Jack. That's what started this whole bit. Hey, see, all you did is turn around again and go back to sleep. Honest to God. Wish I were a producer. I could sleep through this. You know, you don't have to be here. You can go to sleep. At any rate, the 10, 10 grain difference between the two not being that dramatic. And Jack always said, and I, I've been repeating it, I always say, I, if i got to throw a rock, I want to throw the biggest rock I can. But 10 grains isn't that big a deal, you see. But the muzzle velocity has gone up 290 feet per second by going to the 10 millimeter. So, yeah, it's a no-brainer. And, and 649 foot-pounds of energy versus the 411 feet out of the other. Yeah. And, and besides, this one's got the, the cool-looking cryptic camouflage. <laughs> but yeah, at any rate, but this is what I found interesting. Winchester makes what they call the Win 1911, which basically, I'm thinking, because I looked at it, and it's a nickel a nickel-plated hollow point. Yeah, it's a silver tip. I says I, jacketed hollow point. In a 230 grain, and it only comes out, instead of the 1,000 feet per second, that it would come out with their, their Super X at a 185 grain bullet, the 230 grain bulleted Win 1911. This is touted as being designed for a 1911. So it'll feed correctly and, and operate at its optimum, which, eh, whatever. But it's coming out at 880 feet per second instead of 1,000 feet per second, which is a dramatic slowdown. Again, a 5-inch barrel. But it has 395 feet pounds of energy versus the 411 hardly any change at all 
because you've got that 230 grain bullet. And I just wanted to I just wanted to make that point so I could prove my jack and my theory of if you're going to throw a rock, throw the biggest one you can. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> that was a point I wanted to make. But yeah, I think I'd buy the uh, the Win 1911 and, and run that because why shoot a 185 grain bullet if you can shoot a 230 grain bullet? Says me. When you have that little big change in velocity too, a real drop in velocity, and I like the subsonic rounds because a little gentler and not so noisy. Yeah. And also, a big heavy object moving slower is less likely to have fallout if you screw up, I say. At any rate, I thought that was all interesting, so I wanted to bring it to you tonight. But I'm getting really excited to shoot this thing, and, and, and I have one holster I have found that I think will work, and I might just get that for it. It's a shoulder rig is the way it'd have to go. But I haven't actually tried contacting the guys that make the good stuff and see if they can actually make one. But a little bit oddball because of the longer slide. And, and of course, the front sight, again, I'm not real thrilled on. It's that same kind of thing with the fiber optic rod in there that extends back. But this is not just like the Glock one we talked about a couple weeks ago of it being screwed in. This has got that dovetail, so it's not a real issue about the leverage and knocking it out of position, but... <laughs> I'm also anxious to shoot it, because, you know, for a gun that was this expensive, they're a little off on that front side. It's a little, little to one side, I will say. Yeah, not that bad. Kind of light in here. The light and the cryptic. The cryptic stuff's throwing me off, I think. When I look at it, no, it's it's pretty much on, I think. But I do think I'm going to need to put a little glue in there, make sure that fiber optic rod doesn't pop out. That being said, I I think I can be able to get out there and shoot this thing, even even having had it for this long, and still beat Ebomi. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't shot his yet. Well, there you go. There's the show for tonight, guys, and it's only sucked up 18 minutes and 3 seconds of your life. You'll never, ever, ever get back again. Jack? Jack? Yeah, we're, we're winding up. You might want to look at the camera and pretend you actually are interested. Before I leave you, I'm having a contest right now. A 5,000 sub giveaway. We're getting awful close to 5,000 subs. Just a couple hundred to go, give or take. And all you got to do to get in my contest tonight is, number one, be a subscriber. Number two, like this video. And, I, and how can you not like a couple of SIGs in 45 and 10 millimeter? How can you not like a 10 millimeter? Well, you know, maybe you're not a cryptic camo fan, but it's kind of growing on me. I'll have to say I kind of like it. And we're going to talk about that next week because I got something planned for next week that involves that. And number three, in the comment section down below, just tell me what you're thinking and tag it with SIG. Yeah, why not? Since that's what we're looking at here. Two SIGs. Right, Jack? Oh, Jack, you didn't even make it through my... You didn't even make it to the end and you turned around. Oh, my God. I think we got to get him. Jack, we are got to do something about your dating. I think you're dating so much you can't even keep awake. You, your, your job is suffering because of this. Seriously, Jack. 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 Seriously, quit dreaming about gals. You, you've had more gals than 99.99% .99 of the men in, in America, and yet that, it's like that's all you do is dream about them. Yeah, he's a lost cause. From Mr. Holster and Jack, thank you, Jack. I appreciate that. Go out and stay safe. Oh, that's 19 minutes and 50 seconds of your life. You'll never, ever, ever get back again.